What exactly is this film about? This film is about Tina, a 22-year-old girl who's expected to do a difficult job without any guidance. Tina works day in and day out to finish writing this mysterious book. Once it's just about over, something horrible happens. What was the process for creating the idea for the project? It took my team and I a while to come up with an idea. We wanted to do a mystery just simply because we thought it was an interesting genre. After many failed ideas, I decided to look up the exact definition of mystery. While researching this, I found myself on Britannica.com with the definition of the genre. While reading this, I stumbled across the word pseudoscience, and I didn't know what it meant. I did my research, and the rest is history. So what exactly is pseudoscience? According to Oxford Languages, pseudoscience is a collection of beliefs or practices mistakenly regarded as being based on a scientific method. To put it in simpler words, it's a scientific practice that cannot be possibly proven true. A common example of this is conversion therapy or astrology. What did you use with the knowledge of pseudoscience? We merged two popular practices that follow into pseudoscience, biorhythm and strauss howey generational theory. The biorhythm concept is about people's daily lives being significantly affected by rhythmic cycles with periods of exactly 23, 28, and 33 days. Typically a 23-day physical cycle, a 28-day emotional cycle, and a 33-day intellectual cycle. Founded in the late 19th century by Wilhelm Fleiss. The strauss howey generational theory theorized reoccurring generational cycles in American history and Western history. Founded by William Strauss and Neil Howey in the late 1900s. We merged these two to make a film about a society where pseudoscience is real, and a woman named Tina makes a book about it with one little twist. What hardships did you face during the project? We had lots of hardships, such as corrupted footage from one of the days. With this footage, the opening would have surpassed two minutes, so we probably wouldn't have been able to use it anyways. We were able to leave our phone opening off of her leaving the house instead of arriving at the location. We also had a lack of setting. We were supposed to film in a real office building, but we did not have those resources available. We were overall able to get past that and create a film opening that we were really proud of. How did your group work around your busy schedules? We were all extremely busy. I personally had a TV production competition right in the middle of the project. In the beginning, one of my roommates had a deco competition and all of my group was gone for spring break. We had to film pretty early on because of this. We also did not have all the members at all the filming days. This all wound up being fine because we had good communication with each other. What did you use to film the project? The film was shot on a Sony a7 III, one of my favorite Sony cameras, with the two lenses being used being a standard 50mm and an 18 to 35 mm lens. The camera is placed on my personal tripod. The dialogue audio was recorded with these super cool wireless GVM mics. These mics automatically sync into the camera. What was the film edited on? The film opening was edited on Adobe Premiere with our free school subscription. Here we added many effects, color graded, and most importantly, put all the clips together. I learned a lot about color grading, something I have never experimented with before. I watched YouTube videos on how to create colors to be harsher or less intense. This was such a cool thing to learn, and I plan on learning more in the future. Where did you get the sounds? We used lots of artificial sound found on YouTube and Pixabay. Some of the sounds found include cars driving by, room tone, chair rolling, and footsteps.